Second Chronicles 29. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old. He reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem, Judah. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. That's not Zechariah the prophet. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father, grandfather, had done. So when God speaks about Hezekiah and his father, he can't say as his father that we learned about Ahaz. And there have been some good kings so far. But he runs him all the way back to David. Because Hezekiah is going to open up what Ahaz is closed up the temple. So when God says going back to David, though the temple is there for Hezekiah, Hezekiah has got that same heart that, okay, I got the temple, David did it, but it's closed. No one can use it. So it's the heart to have a place for God. And many Christians have that heart today, thinking a building is where God is, and that's Old Testament. God doesn't dwell in a building. He dwells among humans that are saved. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. So his father has closed the doors we read last night and repaired them. Almost the fact is that uh, he boarded them up. He did something where those doors could not be opened. The vessels of the God house of God are gone too. Yeah, that's going to come up a little bit later. So, when we read Ahaz closed the door, I, if he had to repair them, I, he put boards up and nailed boards again, and he made it so those doors weren't open that Hezekiah had to redo and repair those doors. And he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in the East Street. The world has an easy street. God has the East Street. And said unto him, Hear me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves. And sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers. So the people first, sanctify. And carry forth the filthiness, that's the first time that word shows up, out of the holy place. Holy place is where the candlestick, the table, and the altar incense is. There is filthiness inside that place. And we're not told what it is. For our fathers, not just his father, plural, have trespassed and done that which is evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. And have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the, inha the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs, backslidden. That's one of the places you find backsliding. And they have shut up the doors of the porch. Now it's not just the house of the Lord, but the porch. That's that area outside the temple. Maybe like a waiting area. Because the courtyard is where the brazen altar and the labor is. Here's a porch. A porch is not in the house, but it brings you to the house. So they really shut this place up for the people. And put out the lamps. That's in the holy place. Have not burned the incense. That's in the holy place. Nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place. Unto the God of Israel. That's kind of interesting. It says, offer burnt offerings in the holy place. That was in the courtyard. Hezekiah is calling the whole temple the holy place. And it's been vile. It's been turned wickedly. Now since we've done that, look what he says. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem. You know you got all this trouble, you got these problems? Because we're not serving God correctly. And troubles and problems in your life may be because you're not serving God correctly. And it could be other things. It could be Satan. It could be God. It could be your own self. But one of the ways is to look at, is it because I offended God? 
and deliver them to trouble. How's that? To astonishment. Wow. Look what's happened. Oh, look at the mess we're in. And to hissing. That's the first time that word shows up. It's, that's what a snake makes. And that's an oriental gesture. And that would be in the old movies when, when kids went and, and seen a superhero movie and, you know, the villain show up, they'd be hiss, hiss, you know, and clapping their hands. And, you know, when the girl shows up, ooh, ah, Gucci. It's a gesture of, ooh, just rotten, vile. As you've seen with your eyes. So Judah now is seen in Jerusalem. They're hissing at us. The place is destroyed. Just look. The great majesties our fathers have spoken about. And the doors are all closed up and messed up. No one's been there. Now it is in my heart, Hezekiah. Not, and lo, the, our fathers have fallen by sword, war, murder. And our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. And we read that all through chapter 28. The Edomites, the Assyrians, and almost remember with Ephraim, but God said, bring them back. Now remember, Hezekiah is son of Ahaz, so he's seen his brothers and sisters go. He had one of his brothers killed by an Ephraimite. Chapter 28. Now is in my heart, Hezekiah, to make a covenant, a pact with the Lord. I'm going to make a covenant. I'm going to serve the Lord, the Lord God of, of Israel. Not the Lord God of the Syrians. Not the Lord God of the Edomites we read in chapter 28. That's the gods of his father. Hezekiah has learned just because you got your butt whipped by them and his father church of those, oh, those gods are mightier because they won. Hezekiah is like, no, 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 no. We lost. We have the right God. We have the wonderful God. And my father's going after the wrong gods. I'm going to go for the Lord God of Israel. I serve the God. I am saved by the God that said he came onto his own, his own received him not. I serve the God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I read. I was reading today. I have a book I'm reading. I'm amazed of Islam. That they go to the sacred place that Abraham and Ishmael built. This house, wherever it was. And they go have the nerve to say that Genesis 22 was Abraham and Ishmael. That God told him to offer up. No. It's Isaac. So the Israelites of, of Islam defy the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, uh, uh, Ishmael, see, I say it, and whatever, whoever. That's not correct. That's not biblically right. Hezekiah has the one true God. His father had other gods. Israelites have other gods. That his fierce wrath may turn away from us. God's angry with us, but he has the capability of not being mad at us all the time. My sons, be not now... I can't say that word. That word only shows up in 2 Peter 1.12. That's the first time. The other place is only 2 Peter 1.12. For the Lord has chosen you, Israel, to stand before it. Oh no, not Israel. He is addressing the Levites and the priests. To stand before him to serve him, that ye should minister unto him, the priests, the Levites, to burn the incense. No one else can burn it. I remember my great great grandpa Uzziah. That's probably still floating around that story. You know what he did? He went right into the holy place and offered that incense and got leprosy. Hezekiah's like, there's only one people that offer that incense. That's you, the priest. Look, he's doing right. The capability is there to be right, because how come Hezekiah is doing right and his father did wrong? 
And we got to learn when we look at children, it's not what the parents are doing. Children have to, listen, Hezekiah comes from a wicked, vile father, and look how well he's doing. And we're going to see kings that did right and did well in the eyes of God, and their children turned out sour. And then you got ones like Eli, he just doesn't care, and he has no, and his children are a product of his raising. Then the Levites arose, got up, Matha, the son of Amaziah, Joel, the son of Azari, the sons of Kohites, they were the ones that were to carry the front everything. The burdens would be on their, their soldiers, shoulders. And the sons of Merari, Kish, the son of Abdi, and Azari, the son of Jahiliel, and of the Gershonites, Jah, the son of Zima, Eden, the son of Joah, the sons of Elbathan, Shimari, and Jehiel, the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Maniah. The sons of Heman, now that Asaph and Heman, those are the ones that David set up for the musical instruments. David ordained their house and their family for the music playing for the Lord. So Hezekiah is going to bring back, we're going to see in a moment, he's going to bring back the song and the hymns of God. Shimei, the sons of Jeduthun, Shimei and Uzel, and they gathered the brethren and sanctified themselves, made set apart. We're going to live for God. We're not going to live for the world. That's what sanctify means. We're going to do good. We're not going to do evil. And came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Now look at that. God commanded Hezekiah. You get those priests, you get those Levites set up straight, you get them sanctified. The king went to the people and said, you get up, you get set up, you sanctify yourself and get the house ready. People will call that church and state, but God is speaking through the king. For right. And the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord. Holy place. To cleanse it. Remember, it was filthy. And brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. That's where the Raising altar would be, that's where the labor is. So they were able to bring garbage into that holy place. And what that garbage is, is probably idolatry, probably uh, a grove, you know, little classic trees and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know, maybe a Christmas tree. Maybe decorations from past BBSs or something like that. I don't know. I mess up. Into the court, the house of the Lord, and the Levites took it. To carry it out abroad to the book to the brook and drone. That brook and drone is quite fascinating because whenever they got garbage to clean, they throw it into this brook. They're polluting the brook with what has been polluted to God. They're washing the stuff away. Now, now, they begin on the first day, the first month to sanctify, set apart, cleanse. And on the eighth day of the month came they to, to the porch of the Lord. And they sanctified the house of the Lord eight days. In the sixteenth day of the first month, they made an end. Passover is on the fourteenth. It has taken them eight days of cleaning and sanctifying this house. That's how filthy it is. I mean, have you ever cleaned it? I mean, have you ever just taken eight days to go to the house and clean it? What it's done for them. And they went to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord. And the altar of burnt offerings, that's a brazen altar, with all the vessels thereof, and the showbread table, that's in the holy place, with all the vessels thereof, the plates. Moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz in his reign did cast away, in his transgression, the sinner that he was, we read that he broke them up, he got rid of them. We replaced them, we fixed them. We have prepared and sanctified, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. So, table set back up, candle set, set back up, the altar of incense is set back up, the brazen altar is ready to go, King. We got all the junk out, we got all the filthiness out, we got the place back for God, sanctified. 
Then Hezekiah the king rode early and gathered the rulers of the city, the mayors, governors, and went to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bullocks and seven rams, seven being complete, and seven lambs and seven he goats for a sin offering. Look at that. For the kingdom. We as people of Judah and Jerusalem, the first thing I'm acknowledging after we have cleansed the house of the Lord, we have sinned. God's going to take that. God's going to receive that. God can pardon that. Hezekiah says, hey God, we're guilty. You, you can get a pardon. Again, pardon can be only by those who are guilty. Hezekiah and the people and the rulers were guilty. And for the sanctuary and for Judah and he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord that would be the brazen altar. So they killed the bullocks and the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, when they had killed the rams, they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. They killed the lambs and they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. That's what they were supposed to do. All that blood is to point to one sprinkling that the watchers all, the Lord Jesus Christ. And they brought forth the he goat for a sin offering before the king and the congregation and they laid their hands upon it. Now this goat is for the king, the people, the other offerings were for the people, for the land, for the altars, for the house of the Lord, everything, the things. Now we're looking at the people, the souls. That's it. And the priests killed them. And they made reconciliation. It's a biblical word, getting right, pleasing God, with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement. Biblical word, get things right, for all Israel. Now we're talking about Judah. But, I mean, if people in Israel want to get right, for the king commanded that the burnt offerings and the sin offerings should be made for all Israel, not just Judah. And he sent the Levites in the house of the Lord, that's where they belong, with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, musical instruments, according to the commandment of David. And Gad the king seer, and Nathan the prophet, for so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. We are going to have a music service for the Lord, but it's going to be prescribed by the Lord and not man. David was a man that was a lover of God. His heart sought the Lord, even in his deadly wicked sin. Still, he said, God, I have sinned against you. Nathan was a prophet that walked right up to the king. Who, I'm risking death. Thou art the man. And Gad was always there with the king. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David. The ones that David made. And the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer burnt offerings. Excuse <coughs> me. <coughs> upon the altar. And when the burnt offerings began. The song of the Lord began also with the trumpets. And with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offerings were finished. God ordained. Nothing fleshy. When they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the works of David, words of David, and of Asaph, that's the guy put in charge, the seer. Oh, Asaph was a, was a prophet too. And his prophecies were put into the words. And put to song. And they sang praises in, with gladness. And they... And they uh, bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah, and Hezekiah answered and said, Now ye have consecrated yourself, made yourself right for God. And the Lord come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings. 
Now we're going to thank God. We brought the burnt offerings. We brought the sin offerings. Sin offerings first. The burnt offerings that pleases God. Now we're going to thank God. Into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. As many as were of a free heart. That's what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. You know, not, not because you have to. Not because you got to sign up on a sign-up sheet. Not because you're being forced to, but willingly. These people brought because they wanted to bring a burnt offering. So we have a sin offering, we have a burnt offering, and we have a thank, thank you, Lord, offering. And the thank you offering was, we just want to thank the Lord. Some people brought nothing. They don't care. And I would assume with this offering, some people brought what they could. And it may have been little like that widow with the two mites, but that's all she had. And when it comes to you giving because you want to give, it's not the abundance. It's what your heart does. I mean, if, if you've got $100 in your pocket and God just lays it in your listen, just take $20 of that. You keep the rest. $20. That's not 10%. That's, oh, I just, just 20 He said, Lord, okay, here's $20, man. I'd like to give you more here. Here's another 10 That's a thankful will offering that, hey, God, I love you. Or you can, well, here's $20, God, like you really need. You own everything. All the, you know, God don't want that. That widow that gave her too much, she gave it because she loved the Lord. You know, she didn't give it to Jesus. She gave it to God in the treasury. Jesus happened to take notice of it. And the number of the burnt offerings, which the congregation brought. This is the burnt offering. This is between the sin offering and the thank you offering. Three score and ten bullocks. That's 70 bullocks. A hundred rams. And two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the cops, see, God keeps track. Don't you worry about what you give God, what you don't give God. He's recording it. He's writing it down. Put $10 in the offering plate. He didn't really give it, you know, he put it in there, but he didn't want to. He put $5 in that offering plate. Man, if he had 100 he put down 100 he put $10 in there. He'd love to give that $10. He had other money. He, he wanted, he'd love to put $10 in there. That's what God said. Two hours serving me today. Three hours serving me today. 15 minutes, 20 minutes in prayer because he really wanted to do it. Four chapters of reading your Bible today because you wanted to do it. He records it all. God, through the book of Numbers and through the book of Chronicles, tells us one thing. If an occupation that God has, he's a bookkeeper. And when the people are lost, and there are some people that are saved at the great white throne judgment, the Bible says in the books, plural, were open. Now it rests upon your name being written in the last book of life, but it said the books were open, and the men were judged by the works of those books. Now for the Christian, he, he his works are put to fire. Wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stone. Of everything we've done, we will not be burned, but our works will be burned. And if it survives the fire, you'll get a reward. So God's a great recorder. The consecrated things were 600 oxen and 3,000 3, sheep. But the priests were too few. There wasn't enough priests so that they could not flay, cut, you know, do the butchering, all the burnt offerings. Wherefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them. Now, this is where we get all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And they had to ask God permission. God, we don't have enough priests. And if we're going to have anybody help them, it's got to be the Levites. Can the Lord, can the Levites help them? There may not be priests, but we need their help. You can't ask Judah, you can't ask Dan, you can't ask Issachar, you can't ask Ephraim. You've got to get the Levites. 
Levites did the service of the temple, cleaning and, and moving and getting firewood. The priests were the ones that did the sacrifices, and there wasn't enough priests. And to the other priests had sanctified themselves, so there were priests still sanctifying, weren't ready. For the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Everybody wants to get right, it was just more Levites than priests. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance. There was a lot. With the fat of the peace offerings, there's another offering, the peace offering. We got the sin offering, we got the burnt offerings, we got the thank you offering, we got the peace offerings. And drink offerings. For every burnt offering, so the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. They did it the way the Bible said to do it. The way the law told them to do it, they did it in that order. Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. Hey, let's do it. Let's get the earth. Let's get the And suddenly, but it was all done in an orderly fashion. There was no chaos. We didn't have enough priests, but we sought God and God helped us and we got everybody to do what they needed to do. Wonderful thing. 